Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Codeship. Here we post tons of content on competitive programming. So if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Great, now let's get started. So our task for today is pretty simple. All we have to do is find the factorial of a number. Although that's very easy to do iteratively, that is by running a loop. But today we are going to do it using recursion. And this way, we will also tighten our grip on it even more. So, what is n factorial denoted by this exclamation mark? So, it is nothing but the product of all integers from 1 to n, like 1 into 2 into 3, so on till n. So, what is 5 factorial? That is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is nothing but 120. So, this is our task. We need to find the factorial of any number using recursion. So let's recall our magical process to solve any recursion problem. And the first step is to find anything that is repeating. So in other words, find the find a recurrence relation. So here notice that this part is nothing but 4 factorial, right? And this is 5. So 5 factorial can be written as 4 factorial multiplied by 5. And now notice that this is a similar problem. 4 factorial is nothing but the sub problem of, a, uh, of 5 factorial. Right. So here if we try to represent it using functions. So what I get is factorial of n can be written as factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by n. Right. So here we have this functional recursive relationship. And now let us also think about the base cases, the mistake we made in the previous video. We are not going to repeat it again. So think about some potential base case that could help terminate the program. So the sense of factorial is essentially like if there are n objects. So the number of ways to arrange these is given by n factorial. So from this we get that if there is only one block, then what is uh, what is number of ways to arrange it? Well, it is simply one. So I get that factorial of one is simply one. And here's our base case. Now you might be wondering that we also know the value of factorial of two. That is two, right? And we also know the value of factorial of 3, which is 6. So why don't we code them as well? Now, this is very important. So again, recall from the previous video, in the Fibonacci series, we had two base cases, right? So what would have happened if there was only one base case that is Fib of 1 is 1? So notice that inside my tree, when I would have called Fib of 2 somewhere, so it would have made one call to Fib of 1, that is a base case, but the other would be to fib of 0, right? And then 0 would make a call to minus 1 and 2 minus 2 as well, right? So, and then this would continue indefinitely. So, this is not the ideal base case, right? So, that's why since we are making two calls to fib of n minus 1 and fib of n minus 2, we need at least two base cases to stop the program. But here, since we are only calling n minus 1, Right, so uh, only one base case is sufficient here. Like even if I start from three, I come to two, then I come to one, and then I stop. Even if I start from six, I come to five, then four, then three, then two, then one. So no matter where we start from, we always culminate into this condition. So now that we have both the steps, we can code this out. So let's move on to the code shift ID, and I'll be doing this in C++. So I take the input for an integer n and what I output is simply the factorial of n right so we'll write to we'll need to write the function as well so the function returns an integer so int fact that takes a parameter n it's going to check if n is 1 so this is our base case in that case we know factorial of 1 is 1 so we return it otherwise we return factorial of n minus 1 multiplied by n Right, but I note that we don't need the else condition because, anyways, whenever in a function, uh, a, 
we are returns we are returning something so any lines after that anyways don't get executed so let's now call it for f of 5 right so this should ideally return us 120 and if you are from a different language like python then i have essentially defined a function back that takes a parameter n and if it's one returns one otherwise returns fact of n minus one times n and in this part i'm just taking the input from the user and outputting factorial of uh, whatever the user has entered so our program has run and it's giving the output 120 exactly that is what is desired right so now let me just dry run this program so what essentially could be happening is that we make a call to factorial of 5 right and let me just denote it by f of 5 because otherwise it would be really tedious for me to write again and again so we call f of 5 then 5 since it's not a base case we'll call f of 4 and whatever f of 4 is it will multiply it with 5 and output that but now f of 4 cannot simply compute its value so for that it will say okay let me call f of 3 and whatever he says i'll multiply that with 4 but again this goes for f of 3 as well so it will call f of 2 then f of 2 is not a base case so it will call f of 1 but now as we have coded out here that if n is 1 we return 1 so this is simply going to return 1 and now f of 2 will say that okay f of 1 is 1 so i can multiply that with 2 get my value and i'll return that back then f of 3 will multiply 3 with 2 and return 6 back then this is going to return 24 back and finally we have f of 5 which is going to return us 25 times 5 which is 120 and here we go we have the answer although this is looking more like a recursion branch than, than a tree but anyways even the fibonacci one doesn't look like a tree programmers who sit all day long on their chair inside their rooms forgot that the trees outside grow upwards and not downwards so ideally they should be f of 5 calls f of 4 which calls f of 3 and so on but let's not disregard any convention here so that is how f of 5 is giving us the correct answer that is 120 and before we wrap up there's another thing very interesting that i wanted to show that i figured out recently that this is my screen recording software and notice these squares within squares within squares take a guess at why this could be happening so actually my screen recorder is recording my screen but since currently in my screen i've opened my screen recorder so essentially my screen recorder is recording my screen recorder which in turn is recording my screen recorder which in turn is recording my screen recorder and yes that is recursion so not just in binary search not just in sorting algorithms not just in backtracking not just in dynamic programming not just in data structures like link list trees graphs but recursion is everywhere and on that note let's start